So I want to introduce you guys to Lorena. She is a CSUN alumni and she was actually a trans member. So she has experience with trans. And so we're so glad to have her here to talk about her career and her clothing brand. You can begin whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, just to make sure, is the slideshow showing? Mm-hmm. So hi everyone, my name is Lorena Cortez. I am a designer, videographer, and just all around creator. And I'm so excited to be talking to you all. And it's been a few years since I was in CSUN, but I loved um, the trends, the trends um, club. <laughs> And so I started Ruby Ray Clothing actually back when I was at CSUN in 2015. And I did not know what I was doing when I started this, but I was just like, I'm gonna do it and let's see what happens. And so over the years, I've come to realize that my main goal was to empower women of all sizes, to encourage glamor in everyday life and explore design concepts on my own. And so as you can see here, like my style is very 40s and 50s. Um, I love old Hollywood. And that's where I get a lot of my inspiration from is like old movies and music and um, even simple things like houseware, like a toaster was so designed elegantly compared to nowadays. And I really, just love the fact that they took into consideration every single detail. For example, like a toaster back then had different color coordination and engraving. And I just feel like you don't see that anymore. So I try to incorporate that design idea into my own and make it just very intricate. And so see, um, these are some of my designs that I've done over the years. I've worked with different influencers and models. And here are some more designs. It's all very um, like figure hugging and kind of inspired by like Dior, the new look, because it accentuates the waist. And then I also love to work in videography. Um, so if it's okay with you, I want to share this video that I directed and mm -hmm. produced. Yeah, go um, for it. Okay. It was all <laughs> literally just for fun, but I got a whole team together. I had a makeup artist, a camera woman, and an assistant, and we worked on this for like seven hours and just knocked it out. And it's more experimental just for the visuals. my video that um, was so cute I love it I created all of the well, both of the outfits and accessorized it so it was a huge project for me but um I'm just like so proud of it and it was so much fun to work with this team of women oh, the sound effects are cool <laughs> thanks mm -hmm. and then in addition um to my own clothing line, I've done some styling with my mentor. She works in costume design, but on the side, she also does styling for different um, clients of hers. And in 2019, she needed some help uh, 
for shopping for the actor of Luke Cage. His name's Mike Coulter. And he was doing two different uh, appearances, one for BET and one for The Real. So I was running around all over LA and picking out clothes for him. And it was kind of a struggle that day because he um, needed that specific turtleneck that you see on him. And it was like around this time, like spring-ish, or was about to be spring. So it wasn't even in, in the, any of the stores. So it was like really difficult to find it because it wasn't um, the right season for that. But it worked out and that was really fun. And I got to meet him and like drop everything off. And then, so kind of a segue from that, my mentor, like I said, works in costume design. She's worked on a ton of TV shows and I took her master class during COVID, like right when it started. And it really, really piqued my interest. So I decided that I'm gonna kind of shift gears away from entrepreneurship into costume design. And so she's introduced me to a ton of people and one of them also became my mentor. And she, um, her last project was Euphoria, uh, which is so cool to me because I'm obsessed with that show. And um, so yeah, that's like my next venture in fashion is gonna be costume design. And I'm really excited to start on that. And that's my presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions, you guys can always put it in the chat or feel free to turn your mic on. Um, I have a question. Um, for your clothing brand, how did you get the name Ruby Rose? Ruby, uh, Ruby Ray. I, um, Marilyn Monroe was someone that I really looked up to over the years, and I thought of her name, how it has the MM. So I was like, how can I do that for my own name? And my birthstone is a ruby. So I just figured, oh, let me just make a name that has an R and an R. It just seems kind of random. But for me, having like an alter ego helps me with like my confidence and kind of puts me into a mindset like I am that girl, like I'm the coolest person on earth. And that's what Ruby Ray is to me. So I decided why not name my clothing brand that and hopefully encourage that in other women when they wear my clothing. That's really cool. I like that. Thank you. Um, I have another question. What's like your favorite part of like your job that you like to do? For the clothing brand, I really like working with different clients. Um, I've become very passionate about size inclusivity because the one like downfall about the CSUN program that I feel like I wish was better was um, learning how to alter patterns to be bigger or smaller, or just like tailor them better. Um, Cause I feel like all of the, the dress forms that we had there were very specific sizes and they only went up to like, what is it, like an 18, which isn't that big. Mm -hmm. um, and so working with different women who might have like a larger chest or a larger waist size, like it's just really fun to be able to work with them and empower them through the clothes that I make them. And once the whole process is over and they have like their first custom item, they're like so in love with it. And they realize like, it's not about me fitting into the, the clothing piece. It's about the clothing piece fitting my body, right? Like that's what it should be. But I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's hard to shop because everything is so standardized to smaller figures. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we actually have a question in the chat. Okay. Catherine asks, so how did you get your, how did you get started in your own clothing brand and how were you able to get models and influencers for your brand? So the way that I started, um, kind of like I said in the beginning, I did not know what I was doing. I was just like, I'm going to make a Instagram for 
my clothing brand and I'm just going to do it. And I sat down and designed maybe like eight pieces. And um, my friend that you saw in a few of the pictures, her name's Monica. She um, helped me out and she modeled for me. And I have a friend who's a really great photographer. And we just got together one day and shot everything. And that's how I like built my website and I posted everything and slowly, little by little, the more consistent I was with it, I started getting more and more orders. Um, and then how was I able to get models and influencers just by networking and the influencers, I literally just DM them and was like, hey, would you like to collaborate? I can send you stuff if you can send me photos. And this was back in like 2015, 2016. So people weren't really like huge influencers yet or like they weren't getting paid for it as much, I guess. Um, so it was more of like a trade off for us which worked out for me because I was able to just send them product. And um, yeah, that's like my biggest thing is I think networking goes a really, really long way and just making really good connections with people and and sustaining those connections because people remember that and they'll reach out to you when they have opportunities as well. Thank you. Um, Susanna asks, hi, I'm an illustrator. I'd like to know how to collaborate on a fashion design for your brand. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. I'm also an illustrator too. I kind of do like everything. Um, but I would love to see your work if you could DM me on Instagram and we can get started on that. That would be awesome. Thank you, Lorena. Um, when starting like your brand, did you like make every piece like by hand or do you have like sewers and like pattern makers that you do it for you? Yeah, so to this day, everything is handmade pattern drafted by me and that's another thing I, I forgot to touch on was all of last year I decided to wholesale to other brands and I did everything myself which I don't recommend okay. doing because that's like a ton of work and it can get a little stressful but I do make everything myself um, and I have considered hiring a team or like hiring assistants but which I have like on a freelance basis here and there I'll hire someone just to do some quick work for me um but honestly my goal in life has never been to be a huge um designer with a huge business I kind of prefer to work under someone else to have more structure and guidance and then do my own projects on the side whenever I feel like it. Okay, thank you. Um, Isabella asks, was it hard to gain an in initial following for a brand? And is there anything you did specifically to boost your engagement slash gain more followers? Yeah, so in the beginning, what really helped me was doing giveaways. Um, and I had them specifically like, you have to follow me, you have to post it on your story, tag me, whatever. And then I did one giveaway in the very beginning and it really helped me blow up to get my first thousand followers. Um, and so I would just say being consistent on social media, which I know is really hard for creators because it's like you're trying to create, but then you need to be posting and you need to be showing behind the scenes and you need to be taking videos and pictures. Like it's just so overwhelming sometimes. Um, but just the to the best of your ability, try and be consistent, try and show, you know, behind the scenes work and final product pictures and making sure that your photography is really on point. Like don't post just like in your bedroom with like a crazy background like make sure that it's very clean and um, edited very nicely like with the colors I would say those are my main tips 
Um, what would you like recommend um, aspiring like designers do today if they want to start a brand in the future? Um, I just really want to emphasize again networking because being able to talk to people, not being afraid to ask questions or ask for help has really helped me get farther in my career. Um, for example, like with the costume design now, I've been able to talk to people in really high up positions just by not being afraid to ask a question or sending a cold email, um, learning how to write good cold emails or cold calling someone like that's super important too. Um, you just have to like keep it concise, like say, this is who I am, this is what I'm good at. And I would like to help you do X, Y, and Z. I admire your work and that's it. Like don't make it a really long paragraph or anything because these people are really busy and they don't have all the time in the world. Um, so yeah, I've been able to network with like people on Euphoria, people on the film Cruella, and my mentors again have been very instrumental in like introducing me also to the right people. So um, just networking, I would say, is the most important thing because your connections are everything. That's what's going to get you so far in any industry. Thank you. Um, I have another question. Whenever you're, whenever you started like your brand, did you like automatically knew like the style you wanted or like, did it take time for you to find like your niche style? I feel like I always was intrigued by old Hollywood glamour, um, but it has become even more niched down over the years because now like my next collection that I want to do is something burlesque related where like it's still very old Hollywood glam, but you're gonna be able to remove each piece like centrally, like an extra long zipper on the back to remove it easily, or like gloves that are rhinestone that come off easily. Um, so kind of, yeah, just, it was broadly always old Hollywood glam, but it's gotten much more tailored and much more um, defined over the years. Okay, thank you. If anyone has any of any other questions, you guys don't be shy. You could turn your mic on and put it in the chat. Hi, I'm wondering. Um, you said you wanted to. I saw on the slide you want to be like focusing on cut, like being a cutter, or like what was that again? Yeah, that's called a, a cutter fitter. It's just another term for a tailor. Okay, thanks. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in costume design, there's kind of two different sections. There's the shoppers, the set costumers. Um, those people are like working on set usually, and shoppers are like going out buying all the things that they need or returning all the things that they don't need and keeping that side organized. And then on the other side, which is what I want to get into is like the tailoring, um, drafting the patterns. Sometimes things are done from scratch, but like usually cutter fitters are doing, are just getting the clothing that's already bought and then tailoring it really quickly for the actor. Um, yeah, because I really like sewing, so I want to put that to use. Um, did the were you a design production at CSUN? Yeah, I was. Um, was like the did the program like help you like become like a better designer? Like, did CSUN like really like benefit you in that way? Definitely. Because going into it, I didn't know how to draft any patterns. I didn't know how to measure properly. So I was able to really refine my skills while I was there. Um, but like I said, I really, I think eventually wanna go back to CSUN and kind of help them create a program that's more size inclusive because that was like the only downfall that I had with them or like the only thing that kind of bothered me. Cause I wish, 
I wish they would teach us more how to like alter everything. I don't know. Do they teach you that now? Like how to alter patterns and um, stuff? I'm in pattern making like this semester. And mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, not really. They don't really like the size inclusive. Yeah. Uh, See, I wish that it would be more like that because that's where it all starts, you know, with designers who are learning. And then eventually you'll go out into the field and you'll be able to be more size inclusive. But if you don't have that knowledge, it's like never going to get better. Mm -hmm. um, Catherine asks, is there a specific class or professor that really helped you? Um, professor Goldstein, but I think she retired, right? I think she's still working. Oh, like really? Semester, I don't think. Okay. I loved her. She is really hard. And she would get mad at me all the time for cutting corners or doing things how I shouldn't. <laughs> but she's what pushed me to be better. And she's what um, the person that helped me the most as far as like my standards with sewing, because I would always try to cut corners while I was there and just do like a quick fix to things. But if you want to be really good, you have to take your time and learn. Um, Karin, Karin asks, do you have any tips to start networking while still being at school? Yeah, so I would say um, make a LinkedIn profile if you don't have one. And you can just, it's such a powerful tool that you can like search in the search bar so specific. Like you can type in CSUN alumni fashion design or CSUN alumni um illustration or illustrator um whatever specifically you want to get into you can find that through linkedin and um there you have the ability to message them through there so that's what i would do is like i would type in CSUN alumni um, fashion design or technical designer and I would just shoot them a message and be like, hey, can do you have time for an informational call? I see that we're both alumni from CSUN. Like, it would be so great to um, get to know you and your perspective on your experience so far. And usually, like, people will respond really quickly on there. Um, so I would say, yeah, just like trying to research through there and just really even networking across, like networking with your peers, because if you think about it, eventually people in your class are gonna graduate, they're gonna get into their fields and keeping that connection with them throughout the years, they'll remember you and they'll be like, hey, I have this opportunity, are you interested? And it's just really important to continue keeping that contact with that person. Isabella asks, is there anything you wish you knew beforehand in regards to starting your own brand? Um, I'd say like last year when I did the wholesaling, I wish that I had thought that through more because I was very excited to jump into that but I didn't think about how hard it would be to wholesale a whole collection by myself like just for one person I made 55 handmade pieces of denim items which denim is really hard to work with um and I think I was I was just being a little greedy and thinking about the money more than about the work like how hard that would actually be um, so I think what that taught me is I need to really sit down and consider the pros and cons before choosing to work on a project and ask a ton of questions before starting any project because not every client is going to be the right client for you. The money is not always worth it. And, um, yeah, you want to work with people who are going to be patient and appreciate you. And of course, there's going to be clients that aren't the easiest to work with. And we're all going to experience that at some point. But 
it helps you grow. And um, so, yeah, I would just say like really asking yourself, is this the right project for me? And do I really want to get into this right now? Um, when you mean by like wholesale, do you mean like manufacturing like from other people? Yeah, so like in this situation, I was the manufacturer for them. Oh, okay. I was doing the work of a whole factory, but just by myself. Okay. Yeah. What are you all um, majoring in? Or like, what are your dreams? Well, I'm a design and production major. Mm -hmm. I want to like start my own brand eventually, but I also like styling also. So I would probably start with styling. And then while I'm doing that, like build my brand. Cause I know like building a brand like takes a really long time. So that's how I would go about it. Awesome. Do you talk to any stylists right now? Not, I mean, I know a few people, but I haven't really like worked with them or not. Okay. Cool. Someone said they're in graphic design, editorial creative director. Is that your dream? Like your your aspiration? Yeah, that's what I want to be. Cool. I'm actually also my brother's a graphic designer, so I kind of like to mess with that too. Catherine, I'm design and production. I hope to someday start my own brand with Parisian and London inspired clothes. Ooh, I love that. Mia, studying fashion merchandising and interested in styling and creative direction. That's awesome. Um, I have a friend who was also in trends and she works as a stylist for Fashion Nova. I feel like she would be a good person to have on here. What's her name? Her name's Kiyama. I can send you her profile. Okay. Apparel merchandising and I hope to be uh -oh. currently majoring in apparel design and merchandising and I'm very interested in hopefully being a costume designer. Oh, yay. I graduated as an art major, but I'm in teaching credential program to be an artist, art gallery owner, and freelance artist. And I came to this club to join a network as well. That's awesome. I want to follow all of you on Instagram. You guys could put in your Instagram handles. Yeah. I literally just followed you, Lorena. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I will follow back. My personal one, let me type it because I'm more active on this one. I'm learning textiles, but I'm all still figuring out what I want to do in the fashion industry. I'm open to trying different things. Yeah, so that's the thing is when I was in college, I also was like, I want to be a designer. That's like my number one goal. And then once I started applying to jobs, I realized how many different jobs related to fashion there really are. Like it's not just design. There's like technical designer, which is like someone who measures everything and makes tech packs. Um, there's like costume design, there's styling. Like there's so many options that people don't even think about, or at least I didn't think about when I was in college. So I encourage you to to research that and figure out like what your niche is because you might find something that is even more interesting to you than just design. Oh, for streetwear, did you watch, um, what was it called on HBO? It was for streetwear. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? It was like a kind of like Project Runway, but specifically for streetwear. I don't have HBO, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Shoot, I don't remember the name. 
Someone said yes. Do you know what the name of it was though? Yeah, with Migos. Let me see, I'm gonna look it up. Oh, the hype. Yeah, the hype was really good. If anyone has HBO, you should watch it. It inspired me a lot. And then actually my a family friend was on the other show, Making the Cut. I don't know if you guys have heard of that one and he won. Yeah. Johnny Kovoda. Oh. Yeah, he's so cool. Um, He's doing just really well for himself. And he started, he started working in a circus and then he was making his own costumes. And then he realized that he loved fashion design. So he started his own brand. And then years later he went on the show and he won. So that was very inspiring to watch too. That's cool. I have a question on like just I want to hear more about your experience with styling because that's also something I thought about as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that project was more kind of like a one off thing that my mentor needed last minute help with. Um, so that I was her assistant. She was in North Carolina at the time. And I was, the styling gig had to be, or was in Los Angeles. So she basically sent me a list of everything that I needed to get and different stores that I could check out. And before even going to the store to save time, because LA is crazy with traffic, obviously, um, you have to like call the store, see if they have it in stock, see if they can put it in, on hold for you. And then... I had to like look at the map of LA to decide, okay, I'm going to go here first because it's closer to me than here, 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 here and pick everything up. And then my last stop was to, um, to drop it off at his house. Um, and then other projects that I've done, like that video that I showed you, um, I created like a mood board along with my makeup artist and I chose like colors that I knew were gonna match my backdrop and jewelry that was gonna match the costumes that I created. So yeah, that one was more personal um, and I was taking the lead on that one, obviously. Um, we have another question. Any advice on pursuing styling as in what I could be doing in school? Um, like what major in school or, or what classes? Oh, internships. Um, hmm. I don't know of any internships for styling. Honestly, I would just look up again on LinkedIn or Indeed um, for like that keyword, like internships. You can like um, refine the search and just type internship specifically and then do styling or even internship at your favorite brand. Um, and even just cold emailing different stylists and making that connection with them and seeing if they need an intern for like a season or, or however long. I know that like if I've um, followed different designers on Instagram and like they'll randomly post that they need an assistant for a day and like you just have to quickly email them and be ready to go so yeah I don't know 
I guess also maybe finding a mentor who is a style an established stylist would help because then of course they can take you under their wing. Um, that's how I got my styling gig, but that's not, I've done styling, but it's not necessarily like my favorite thing, I guess. So I wouldn't be the best person to ask. <laughs> Um, I had a question. So whenever you're like getting your fabrics and stuff, and since you have like your own brand, do you like buy your fabric in bulk or like how do you like save your money to like have like the most materials? Yeah, that's kind of still something that I need to figure out. Um, but what I've done is I'll buy a little extra every time. Like I'll plan out, okay, I want to make like eight of this piece, um, like eight garments of this piece and I'll figure out the yardage that I need and I'll just buy a little extra, but I'll account for that on my website and be like, there's only eight available when it sells out, it sells out. So that it's like more exclusive, I, I guess. Um, but I have, cause right now I'm in the Bay area. So I have this, this fabric store that I always go to and they're very reliable with having the fabric in stock so that's never really been an issue but um I guess I could see how it could be if you don't if someone orders it and you don't have it anymore in stock mm -hmm. thank you does anyone have any other questions or anything yeah. they would like to know specifically I saw some more pop up right here. I found this app on Instagram to find creative jobs. It's called Creatively. I hope this helps. I think I've heard of that one. Or even like um, there's this one called Creative Circle where they match you with a recruiter and that recruiter will email you different opportunities that you can apply for if they think that you're a good fit for it. Um, did you have a creative block when designing for your brand and how did you overcome it? Yes, <laughs> I felt like being a creative person, I don't know if you guys can relate, but it kind of ebbs and flows in a cycle of like, I am so creative right now. I have so many ideas and then out of nowhere, I will just be like in a funk for like a few months and I won't want to touch my sewing machine I won't want to create anything and that's natural you know like you shouldn't force yourself to make something you know like do it when it feels natural to you but also I saw this TikTok the other day that said she kind of like made it part of her everyday life to create so that it just started to get ingrained in her mind and it would come way more naturally to her. Whether she was in the mood to create or not, she would just do it. And so I kind of am interested in trying that out and seeing like if there's a way that I can incorporate it into my everyday life so that I don't get in a funk for a few months. But I guess it just boils down to like what's most comfortable to you at the end of the day, like do what feels best. Mm -hmm. um I have a question um I came a little bit late so I'm not sure if you told us like earlier but like how did you meet your mentor oh yeah so I took this class um well okay let me backtrack Nikea which I think she was the guest speaker last time mm -hmm. she posted about a costume design class um so I messaged her about it, asked her a few questions, and then I ended up paying for it and taking it. And then the woman who teaches it, her name is Rebecca Force. Um, she basically becomes your mentor for life. Like once you take her course, she'll mentor you and introduce you to people. And so she's like my first mentor. And then she introduced me to this other woman named Tessa Diaz, who was on Euphoria. And she's really taken me under her wing and like introduced me to a ton of people. Um, so yeah, the short answer is through that course and through networking. I think I'm familiar. Is it called Style and Lead? Mm -hmm. 
yeah okay yeah because the name sounds familiar I 10 out of 10 recommend if you're interested in costume design it's like the best course ever I loved it yeah I, I think I joined like their Q&A session one time it was like a limited edition like short like mm -hmm. arm like a while back that's why I sound familiar yeah Um, does anyone have any other questions? Um, I'll, I'll ask something. Um, growing up, like, did you always knew you wanted to design or was there like anything else that you're interested in? I do remember being interested in interior design. Um, but then my parents, they bought me a book one day and it was like this huge book. I still have it of like how to sketch out different um, like fashion designs. And I became obsessed with it after that. And that was like when I was 10. So pretty much my whole life, I've always known. And for a minute, I did think I was going to do more styling because at the time, I didn't like to sew, um, but then right before I went to college, I learned and I really, really liked it, like my mom taught me, um, and then I started taking the courses at CSUN, and I, I knew that sewing was a, a really good talent that I had, so yeah, I, I always did know. That's cute. <laughs> Thank you. What about you all? Did you all know that you wanted to do fashion? Yeah, I've always pretty much liked it when I was growing up. I used to always draw. So I was just always interested in like anything in fashion. Mm -hmm. I've always liked design, but I'm like open to like trying other things in the industry as well. Awesome. Yeah, I was always interested in fashion as well. Um, it was funny because my mom had brought up that ever since I was little, like maybe four, I would have to negotiate with her on every outfit that she picked. And so I just never let me, I never let her dress me at all, like at any age. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. Oh, also like the plastic heels that like little girls used to wear, I always had that around. Like every time I always wanted to step out in that, which was super funny. Uh, Catherine says, I used to always draw princess dresses when I was little. My grandparents owned a tailoring shop, so I made clothes for my stuffed animals. Oh my God, that's so cute. Yeah, my mom used to make um, Barbie clothes for her Barbie. <laughs> Would anyone ever go on one of those type of like Project Runway shows or a competition show? Yeah, maybe if I'm like really good at it, but who knows? I've thought about it, but I'm like too scared about the stress. <laughs> but I wonder like how like the casting process is. Do they pick like specific people or like can anybody join? I know that you have to submit an application and like my friend was gonna apply or she did apply to Project Runway and she they needed her to submit like a video too of her work. Um, so yeah, that's probably very competitive, but you submit an application and a video of like yourself explaining your style and your designs. Jalen says, I gained an interest in high school when I started first started thrifting. Yes, I love thrifting. Do you like thrift flip your clothes and like rework them? T 
too lazy to put them. I know that's how I am too. I buy so many things and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and that to it. And I never mm-hmm. do it. <laughs> yeah, same. And then Juan said I started year getting- thrifting. Oh, sorry. In high school, then I picked up something nice. What is everyone's um, specific taste or like style? I know someone said streetwear, but what else do you guys like? Um, I like kind of like the Parisian style. I like classy. Yeah, very like elegant style. Have you ever been to Paris? I wish. <laughs> yeah, hopefully one day. I actually took a course abroad not through CSUN because they didn't offer it but through a community college in the Bay Area and they took us to Italy for two weeks and taught us all about Italian fashion designers and then after that I went to Paris so that was like really cool. cool to learn about those designers that's cool Catherine says classy and feline fashion Ooh, I love Parisian and London inspired clothes my styles between Cher from Clueless and Blair Waldorf. Oh, I love that. Oh, feminine. Girly grunge, cute. See sun summer arts. I'm not sure if they have fashion, but you can travel for the summer and take courses. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. See sun summer arts. Is that like um, a program? Sounds like it. Yeah, it's a program for the summer. It's for, I want to say eight weeks. And it's depending on the study that you're studying, but it should be like a class for example like for painting in Germany and maybe fashion hopefully maybe in Italy you know so that'd be super cool for you guys to try it out yeah that's cool that sounds awesome thank you for sharing no problem um does anybody else have anything they would like to share or anything you would like to ask Lorena Well, it was so nice having you, Lorena. Thank you so much. We learned so much about your clothing brand and your experience at CSUN and how you started your career. And we're so glad you're able to join us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you all for this conversation. I had fun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lorena. Of course. And I'm going to follow you all on Instagram. We're going to follow you, too. (laughs) All right. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye. Yeah.